Hi guys, I'm Shraddha Sharma and today I'm going to sing the Marodam. Hope you like it. The Marodam. Shraddha Sharma started her career when she was just 15. Today, 4 years later, she is an internet sensation. With her YouTube channel Shraddha Rocking seeing close to 2 lakh subscribers and her latest video Dam Maro Dam going viral with 3 lakh hits and a Facebook fan page with close to 4 million followers. Enter Qiyuki, a multi-channel network founded by Shekhar Kapoor, AR Rehman and Sameer Bangara. Qiyuki aims to create a platform for artists like Shraddha by giving them guidance and access to marketing and production facilities. The internet is the new playground for artists who are looking for a level playing field in their quest for success and the opportunities are endless. We get a sense of where it's headed from the man himself, Sameer Bangara. Sameer, thanks so much for joining us. It's it's great to get an opportunity to um, chat to you and catch up with all the activity that's been going on here at Qiyuki. Thanks, Ava. <laughs> it's great to be on the show. Now you're actually one of the most seasoned entrepreneurs we've had uh, on on E Inc. I'm flattered. <laughs> so I want to first, you know. Get a little bit uh, of your story going, especially sure. for some of our viewers um, who still are uh, new to Qiyuki. But tell us about uh, where you started, how you've already, in fact, gone through a couple of cycles of startups. Sure. Uh, so I actually started in the venture capital business and spent a couple of years, uh, what's called the buy side, and then post that uh, went on to being a banker for about six or seven years uh, as an M&A advisor to a bunch of companies. Uh, the journey. So we. As part of being a venture capitalist, I'd invested in a company called India Games, uh, which came back into my life as a as a banker. And eventually, in 2005, uh, I came on board, ran business uh, at the company. We, through that period to 2011, we went through a couple of uh, changes in shareholding. Eventually, sold the business to Disney. It was a good exit, uh, and uh, for about six months after that. Got involved with a bunch of different startups, okay. and eventually, then did uh, Qiyuki with uh, Shekhar Kapoor and Arman. Good exit kind of undermines it, doesn't it? <laughs> uh, I can't complain. All right. So tell us about the the, the birth of Qiyuki. What the idea was all about, the kind of potential you saw in it, and I also ask because the idea itself has evolved. It, it's been a very short period, but even within that, you have seen a few changes in in strategy. So so tell us how that process has been. I'd say the last six months. uh we've grown about 20x and uh you know it took us uh, a while to get our rhythm but uh but growth has been stupendous can't complain and uh you know happy to chat in detail about what the whole product yeah, is yeah yeah tell tell us about the product and and exactly who it caters to you know what kind of uh people or or artists for instance uh, you you get on board as well Sure. So, I mean, very simply put, the vision of the company is to be a uh, the largest online media company mm-hmm. focused on youth and leveraging talent and technology. That's very simply stated. In effect, what the product is, uh, think of the traditional broadcast networks like ABC Corp in in the US or Star Network in India or the Viacom Network. Uh, this is about creating the broadcast networks, but entirely online. um where the mediums of youtube or facebook are almost like the the carrier channels like a tata sky so if we are creating star network uh or the viacom network the, the mediums of consumption like facebook and youtube are the carrier mechanisms the people that we are catering to are predominantly overwhelmingly the 13 to 24 year olds and for the 13 to 24 year olds uh, increasingly the trend is that they're consuming less tv and consuming more of their content online that's one Uh, the second thing is, you'll find that their superstars, the digital superstars, are a different segment of people. Right. So certainly, you have the Shah Rukhs, uh, the Shah Rukh Khans, and the Amir Khans, and Salman Khans in, in the in the traditional media world, and they're big online too. But there are equally big uh, stars online, like uh, you know the All India AIBs, All India Bucks. uh tvf shraddha sharma sanam band power drift in the auto space and so there's this new age of digital superstars 
that are super relevant, super engaged with the 13 to 24 year old audiences. And our, our role is to empower them through technology, the ability to get them to be more discoverable, because uh, there's an entire technology stack that helps them get discovered online. There's so much of content out there, how do you get discovered? That's the first layer of value delivered as a network. Um, and that's a lot, a lot of that is driven by technology. And the next layer is helping them, you know, proliferate across different platforms. There's YouTube and Facebook, but now there's Periscope as a new format. You know, how, how do you deal with that? How do you syndicate to a Netflix? How do you syndicate to mobile telcos? And so as creators, we let people focus on their creative input, yeah. but take care of all the business aspects of creativity. Right. So distribution, production, etc., etc. And eventually what this ends up being in is the brands and companies are realizing that if they want to talk to the 13 to 24 year olds, they should be engaging with their role models, not the traditional role models. So for the younger audiences, their role models are these digital superstars. And these digital superstars are working with us. And therefore, we eventually are the bridge between the brands and the digital superstars, and through this, the end consumers. And so, in our role of the technology layer, the production layer, the distribution layer, there is also the brand connect. And so we take these, you know, we connect the brands to these people so that they can engage with their end consumers. Okay, simple question. How do you monetize this? <laughs> and of course, I mean, I know there's a strategy, but is it one that takes time? Because while advertisers are shifting to the online space, they've still got kind of one foot in the door in traditional media as well. Absolutely, yeah. Um, and this is, this is early days, there's no question about it. But uh, if you try and digest this in the format of a broadcast network and you, you ask yourself what's the monetization model for a broadcast network, it will become very simple to sort of draw the analogy here. So a broadcast network is monetized on ad funded streams. So, uh, and that is a result of TRPs, therefore in this space TRPs are skill. Right. The more the viewers, the better the ad, the ad revenue. Let's call that an organic ad revenue stream. Now, uh, just like in traditional media, you have HD channels uh, that are on a paid stream, uh, ad-free but on a paid stream. Similarly, we could have streams over here that are three-day early releases or premium content that go on paid channels. So there's advertising and paid content. Then there's syndicated content. What do you mean by syndicated content is packaging certain types of content for certain mediums. So let's say uh, syndicated to Netflix. We do a show called The Boss Dialogues was designed for YouTube, eventually went on to NDTV Prime as a 9 p.m. primetime slot. Now, the, we've done two seasons. Uh, we could package multiple seasons of this and syndicate that to a Netflix. And so on Netflix, it would go on a subscription model. So the monetization models are paid and ad funded, simply put, just like a broadcast network. Now, there's a third stream, which is the brand connect. So let's say you have a, uh, a digital superstar, like I said, uh, you know, uh, let's take the example of Shraddha Sharma, who has about 3.7 million fans on Facebook. You know, when she puts up something, uh, within a day she gets between 120 to 150,000 likes on it. So when you actually, uh, and she's already been the brand ambassador for a couple of brands, etc. So at the point at which we connect uh, stars like this to a brand, there the value of that engagement could be anywhere between double digit lakhs to you know uh, upwards of a crore it would depend on what the engagement is how much content etc so that becomes however those streams are not predictable so that that's what i would put in the lumpy revenue streams they would come intermittently but uh, as a percentage of what we make they become pretty significant and the more digital superstars that we work with and i keep say, using the word superstars but you know, our business is as much about emerging talent as it is about emerged. So there are times that you, uh, you know, it, it is about the long tail of content and and the content that is that everybody has heard of. So uh, as much as we, you know, we'd work with the, you know, manage an AR Iman channel and a Shadha Sharma channel and Power Drift and people like that, we also work with 50 artists out of Dharavi. And uh, you know we've we've taken these artists onto shows like Gma on TV. They performed on uh, the fourth season of Coke Studio, and so getting them that visibility in, in in digital as well as offline is part of what we deliver to them. And making them the next gen superstar and finding let's say the next you know the new Yo Yo Honey Singh, if you will, yeah. out of Dharavi is is part of the objective in that particular project. 
So you have uh, organic revenues, advertising, you have paid and you have the branded content stream. So scale is important here though, isn't it? Because uh, as you said, you have a wide basket uh, of, of artists uh, that, you, that you cater to. And uh, of course, uh, there are a certain amount of fixed costs or production costs involved. And, and it, it is only once uh, you have those revenue streams kicking in that even for you as a company, uh, you know, it, it's, it's going to make sense. So how important is scale? And as you said, you've, you've grown a lot in the last few months. So give me a sense of where you're at now. So uh, scale is absolutely relevant. Again, bringing back the analogy of a broadcast network, yeah. you know, having uh, content out there that nobody's consuming is kind of pointless. Uh, we've just uh, standalone breached the 100 million views a month mark. Uh, and I think that's a significant milestone for us, uh, given that we're just over a year old live on network. We run about close to about 130 to 140 different channels. Um, and uh, I think the, the goal is to get to a billion views a month very quickly. Uh, the large networks uh, globally are about five billion views a month. Uh, they've taken four to five years to get there. Uh, my sense is given that video growth in India is so stupendous, um, you know, just the internet consumer base is going to 4x in the next 20, 24 months. Right. If the internet base is 4xing, you can rest assured the video consumption base is going to at least 8 to 10 times have you know experienced 8 to 10x growth at the very least. So what we're talking about is just using YouTube as a proxy and YouTube is not the only platform just using YouTube as a proxy you're talking about perhaps seeing uh, close to you know 40 to 50 billion views a month coming out of one platform. That's tremendous consumption. Which are some of the most interesting artists uh, that you've worked with so far? I don't know if interesting is the right word. Maybe uh, ambitious, bright, surprising. What's uh, really come you're, your way? You're going to get me in trouble <laughs> with that question. Uh, but, Just uh, a couple that, that come to mind straight away. Yeah. I mean, I think the, the young artists that we've been working with from Dharavi have been really interesting. Uh, they're a motley crew. There's, there's not actually one group and they've grown. So there's the Dopodelics that rap about uh, legalizing marijuana. Uh, there's the Slum Gods crew that does, uh, you know, uh, that, that do freestyle rap and reggae rap. And, and they rap in Tamil, Marathi, English, Malayalam, like, you know, 10, 15 languages in one style. So they're not, they, while they may take their cues from, you know, Eminem or Snoop Dogg, their rap style is original and you know getting them to perform on a national award ceremony like Jima and seeing them perform at Coke studio is you know uh, it's, it's a great kick it's a great high because uh, you don't always have the opportunity to really make an impact on somebody's life and I think here is where we see ourselves contributing in a, in a really significant way. Uh, Shekhar Kapoor and Nair Rahman have also announced a, a, a film project with these, uh, you know, uh, with the kids from uh, Dharavi. And uh, we've partnered with Universal Music on that project also. And uh, so I think just that one thing stands out in terms of uh, the, the amount of value. Uh, Shraddha is a great artist, but you know, she, she'd already scaled to a certain level. Uh, it, it's great working with her. There's another band called Sanam. We work with Power Drift in the auto segment. So there's a, there's a huge bunch, of, like I said, that uh, this is what we do. You know, we, we, we try and find new artists regularly, and the experiences are different with, the, with each one of them. Blaze it up! Supergirl! Dopadelics! Smoking that dope, that ain't the crumb. I do it every day, not to pass the time. And then I realize it to grow my rhyme, so to grow my lines, it boost on my mind. Why these people hate your glory? Will they understand if I tell them the story? The first time I smoked that holy plant, I was rolling in the skies while walking on the line. So for a lot of these young artists, because we're talking about uh, youngsters below the age of 20, uh, really, who are already making waves with their talent. What is the driving force? Is it money? Is it fame? Is it just to make an impact? Fame, certainly. I think uh, till they become established, money is seldom the driver. Uh, it's when you reach a stage of uh, a certain stature is when, and when you have a manager on board, and that's when money starts really be becoming the mainstay of the discussion. But in the journey to becoming popular and famous, uh, it's, it's never about the money. And what is the kind of money they could hope to earn? So the benchmark, the 
sort of a global benchmark for an artist. It was recently out on the internet that there's a there's a guy called PewDiePie. He's one of the top YouTubers in the world. He made seven million dollars. Uh, last year, just off of his YouTube content. I'm really contemplating a change of profession at this point. <laughs> <point, but laughs> you know, seven million could be interesting. Uh, but uh, the realism of this is that not everybody reaches that stature. Mm. So the opportunity exists, and the monetization in India is still is is, is smaller. Mm -hmm. But how this is helping for performing artists? You know, I, I remember being on a panel with. Uh, Tanmay from AIB and his story over there was before their YouTube success they were selling one tenth or one twentieth the number of tickets to their live shows. So while the YouTube revenues may not be you know something significant enough to buy a car or a house today the fact of the matter is that their popularity rating some YouTube translate to live revenue streams and that really you know brings in the money. Similarly as we're helping these artists we also work with a bunch of artists in their live performances and so they're building their TRP or their popularity online helps them make more money offline and we're cutting to both the revenue streams. And so that makes a lot of sense for them and, and as for, for us. Yo, 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 what's up Bloomberg? Welcome to Puky. This is your boy Tony Sebastian from Dope Adelis. Alright, this is the platform of course, the platform of source for still talented artists with hope. The platform for pages for all kind of ages on YouTube, not on printed pages. So you can ask me, who are you? Kon hai tu? Kon hai tu? Ni aara na? Ni yaar hai yaar hai? Sao skala rap solo a paar hai? Don't you end yourself? Finding where to start. Utilize your brain according to your heart. Not only the chosen one with the spark. Step up and step in and show what you got now. Who are you? Show what you got. Who are you? Show what you got. Who, who, who are you? Show what you got. This QP. Who are you? <laughs> Thank you, Tony. That was great. That was totally impromptu, wasn't it? Thank you so much. It was great to, to hear, you know, hear it live right here in the QQ office. How long have you been working or collaborating uh, with QQ? Yeah, I've been collaborating with QQ more than like one and a half years. It's going to be two years for now. Awesome, awesome. So Sagar, tell us a little bit about you know the kind of uh, visibility, the kind of growth that that uh, we've seen Tony so get. Actually, Tony's journey has been amazing. You know, the first time I met, uh, so me and Sam met Tony. Uh, he walked into the office. He had a beat on his phone. I think it was a Dr. Dre beat. Yes. So mm -hmm. he had never produced proper music, and he was rapping. And so we said, okay, show us what you got. And uh, he had this brilliant track called uh, Minoto, Minoto, which was which was an amazing track. And so basically, we started working with them. It's a Marathi track in a conversation. Uh, basically, his conversation with a cop. Okay. And uh, <laughs> and Minoto is uh, it wasn't me. It wasn't. And you can so basically a cop is booking him for a crime that he didn't do. Okay. Uh, so uh, it was a great track. And then from that, we started working with him. And now, in terms of visibility, I think Tony has done everything. No? Uh, he did. Uh, uh, he did YouTube Fan Fest in front of like uh, yeah. close to 5,000 fans. He did Jima Awards and recently two million views on a Coke Studio video. No, so yeah. I think he is. And I think he's done a few yeah. ads and yeah. basically he's one of the most popular rappers in the uh, city today. Awesome. Yeah, but but there's stories. So there's there's Tony. So the Duper Delix is the group. You want to talk about your two partners in crime? So basically I started up with this crew in the year 2010 where I had my college friends by the name Agnal Avinash and Rajesh Radhakrishnan. We all formed together and started up with this crew when we had nothing to do. So, <laughs> so we started making tracks which were, one of them went viral and we got help from QK and today where we are standing I want to give a big shout out to QK. They have supported us in each and every edge, you know what I'm saying. Absolutely. Uh, Juhi, why don't, why don't you jump in here as well and you know, tell us also what it's like um, working at QQ because given that you have so many wonderful artists on board, what's the kind of identity that's developed? What's the kind of culture that's developed here when you're, when you're spending all these long hours and interacting with all these super fun people? Uh, I think Sagar's having a little more fun than we are <laughs> since he is actually uh, leading most of the talent hunt and uh, doing most of the content curation. Mm -hmm. I'm doing the slightly dirtier <laughs> job of chasing uh, revenue and trying to actually find uh, uh, you know uh, brand connects for uh, for talent. Uh, I have to say that uh, you know when we started out, I think. This was one of the few pieces of first pieces of content that we actually took out into the market, and they had their video, which was 
you know, we believe in green. <laughs> and I believe me when I say this, there wasn't a single person that we took that out to who didn't appreciate or like that video, right? I mean, right. it was. <laughs> awesome. They didn't know what to I do with it. I don't know if they had the guts to actually put <laughs> yes, it out. Exactly. Because, like I said, you know, the, you they know. rap about legalizing the green right. stuff. Yes. Right. right. Ah, so, right. Uh, so oh, everybody this appreciated it. An unbelievable yeah. music. This is for sure that Judy <laughs> had that video <laughs> on every brand yes. manager's yes. computer. Yes. Uh, trust me. When I said, <laughs> and everybody <laughs> had to nod <laughs> their head to it. Okay. So that was awesome. Yes. Thanks, Judy. <laughs> Legalize weed, man. I'm talking about marijuana. Marijuana, that's what I'm talking about. <laughs> So what does it really take, you know, what does it really take to get a video to go viral? Because that's what everyone wants these days, isn't it? For their video to be like the biggest hit. Well, actually, yes, a video going viral is a great thing. But what we focus on over here is to build a sort of a sustained engagement on a channel. So if you can keep on repeating the success again and again, that's what we prefer. But yes, there are some tricks to make a video go viral. Okay. I'm not going to give my tricks of the trade to the camera. <laughs> uh, but well, uh, it starts yeah. with finding a topic which is trending and then supplying it to communities which are really interested in it and then making this message spread from there. And we brought a couple of people in our team who specialize in just doing that. Well, it's interesting, Samir, because you have a very tight team here at QQ, you know, from what we've noticed. And yet you have achieved so much scale in the last few months. So things must get overwhelming sometimes, right? Keeping up or is it is it just exciting at all times? I mean, how do you also keep everyone I mean, on their toes? Uh, yeah, it's a fair share of that. I've, I've actually been out uh, for two or three weeks. Sagar was operating, uh, you know, uh, off of my desk. Uh, and uh, uh, I, I think the opportunity of going above and beyond your defined roles uh, and getting to do stuff that you love uh, at work and outside. I mean, Juhi's just back from a 600 kilometer cycling trip. Uh, so people get to do what they want to do. And uh, and I think we, we also have a pretty open culture. Uh, everybody's decided that they want to come in late but work late. And so, you know, uh, office is pretty, office is open 24-7. So people will, if you come in here at 10 o'clock in the morning, you're going to find, you know, just a couple of people. But uh, it, it's buzzing and it, it's buzzing right till, you know, 12, 1 in the morning. And uh, and that's fine. So people find their own rhythm. Uh, every now and then, you know, everybody's, it is a startup setup. So people are close, in, in close quarters, uh, you know, tempers run sometimes, but it's all okay. Uh, you know, as long as work gets done and people move on from that, uh, life is good. Okay, before before we, we let you all go, because I, I know we've taken up a lot of your time as well no, today, no. but um, you know, life is also a lot about fun and I, I sense that when I'm here, especially in this really vibrant environment. So if there's, you know, one thing you guys like to indulge in or treat yourself to after hours, what would it be? I know, I know Samir's got a few uh, <laughs> fashions a few things, or a, yes. few, <laughs> a few things. Yeah, so my Sunday mornings are, I don't golf, uh, that's the excuse of the wife. Uh, I'm out uh, riding my motorcycle uh, halfway to Gujarat and back for breakfast. Oh my uh, god. And, uh, yeah, yeah. I, I've seen on a bike ride halfway and he made me cry. <laughs> yeah, we've got, it's... Uh, I think that's his trust exercise. Yes. So he takes you on a bike ride. Yes. Or if you sort of, if you survive that bike ride with him. Every G, he has a bonus point. And then he'll say that, okay. The bottom line is people have fun. <laughs> People have fun. That's the bottom line, Fantastic. right? Fantastic. It was such a pleasure meeting all of you. It was a great vibe here today at the QQ office. Samir, thanks Thank so, you so much. much and uh, you. we wish you all the best. Thank you, Thank you Tony. You. I'm going to come to a concert soon. Yeah, sure. <laughs> You're always welcome. That's all from us this week on E Inc. Hope you enjoyed the show. Thanks so much for watching.